So once again, welcome to all of you, and this is the second part of the bacteriophages after introduction of the bacteriophage basics. And uh, you know that uh, we just try to have the uh, uh, test the efficacy of these bacteriophages uh, locally in the healing of chronic wounds. Mm -hmm. The reason being that the ethical committee permits the use of these uh, bacteriophages locally. and uh, still the permission is not there by the dcgi to use it parenterally so um, no intramuscular no iv nothing can be done so that's why we have taken this one just to see what is happening and you can see the chronic wound is defined as uh, that does not heal in an orderly set of stages and in a predictable amount of time or wound that do not heal within 3 months are often considered as chronic wound chronic wounds often remain in the inflammatory stage for too long and may never heal or may take years so what are the different etiology there are so many you can see the metabolic disease such as diabetes mellitus systemic disease such as rheumatoid arthritis disease other forms like chronic disease such as hiv infection where the immunity has gone down old age malnutrition poor diet alcoholism narcotic abuse medicine such as steroid estrogen vitamin k antagonist and smoking so these are so many factors which are uh, uh, systemic causes of the uh, this uh, chronicity of the disease but the main uh, thing is that the majority of the infections uh, according to a chinese study that 67% of the ulceration in trauma center or trauma traumatic wound are compounded by infection which is further complicated by biofilm formation so infection followed by biofilm formation is the most important thing and the very important thing is that the biofilms are resist resistant form of the bacterial stages where the antibiotics are basically helpless they can, even if the sensitivity is there they cannot do much help to the patients so what is this biofilm you can see the amalgamation of so many types of bacteria you can see the different colors different shapes and this one and they are enjoying like uh, demons and they are staying there in a multicellular form to protect themselves from the outside enemies and you know our body is basically a biofilm evolu evolved out of the biofilm formation so we should not curse this is the survival strategy and we have got so many number of the cells in our body that is 10 power 13 human cells that is basically because of the biofilm formation and then our body is also colonized by more than 10 times more bacteria and even 10 times more viruses that it in power 14 and 15 in the body so our body is basically body cells are living in the sea of the microbes and uh, the viruses are 100 times more and bacteria are 10 times more so you can just appreciate the importance of biofilm so uh, you can see the biofilm slow penetration is there resistant phenotypes may evolve because of the quality of the infection and the environment is altered so this may lead to the less or poor activity of the uh, antibiotic so this is the region why a thick um, layer formation poor penetration resistant phenotypes development and altered environment leads to the chronicity of the infection and the conventional antibiotics are unable to cure them so i shall be giving you two examples uh, real cases which it did uh, long back ago and then the study we have conducted the randomized control trial that i shall be showing you in this presentation within 20 minutes and then you see this this is the 66 year old male diabetic for more than 15 years and suffering from chronic wound for last 6 years he has undergone several rounds of conventional debridement local antiseptics local and systemic antibiotics but without any fruitful result you know the debridement and the local antibiotics are very important are key for the treatment of the um, the uh, chronic ulcers chronic wounds but despite this he suffered uh, amputation of the two toes as well as he was telling that he has spent more than 4 lakhs but without any avail so <clears throat> you can see this is the initial situation on this date may 2019 Uh, and then this, there was a big hole on the plantar aspect of the wound, and this is another wound there. And you can see that we started, we isolated the bacteria from here. That was Staph aureus, and then we prepared the phage, different phages, more than three phages, and then we had a cocktail of three different phages so that the chances of the mutant uh, resistant development can be taken care of. 
so we start simply soaking in the gas piece we are giving every alternate day during the overnight means overnight that gas piece was put over the wound surface and we are not giving any antibiotic either local or systemic and you can just see the effect every week interval the photograph have been taken and you can see how it is healing this is now 22nd may you can see something has happened the wound uh, depth has been reduced and then again you can see another week later means it is almost one month has passed and we have reached to this place here also here also and here you can see almost gone that the deep wound and then this is june 13th almost one and a half month then you can see this is say two months almost no wound is there and then uh, this is exactly two months later there is no wound so in two months it healed but we followed this patient to see that if there is any recurrence so you can see we have followed this is 8 july 16 july and 22nd july 30th july and in august also there is complete healing so you can see that this uh, therapy led to the healing of this and which was not healing for the last six years the another case is a younger brother of one of the plastic surgeon he uh, did the skin grafting part two times but uh, and he did whatever can be done with the conventional therapy but uh, but with failure so he was suffering the chronic ulcer for 2.5 uh, two and a half years and he was diabetic so you can see this is december 12 2018 and serial pictures you can see like this january 10 january 20th january 24 january 25th january 28 29 march 8 and march 16 there is complete healing so and th this has not recurred he is uh, very well known to me because the that plastic surgeon was two years senior to me a friend of ours so we are knowing this so what is bacteriophage therapy the respective phases were applied every alternate day over the surface and covered overnight with sterile gas till the wound became sterile so usually six seven to eight uh, applications are sufficient and then we follow that the surface remains sterile if any other bacteria comes then we isolate the another phages for that bacteria the bacteria is different and then we give the therapy but usually if it is once cured and the wound is kept in a proper way so there is no another inf infection so in this study we took a total of 45 cases and out of them 37 cured the cure rate was 82.2 percent the six cases which we missed there are so many reasons one was the vascular region one patient undergone amputation without uh, informing us one patient was last so there were many things and one person was a uh, chronic alcoholic and not following the uh, maintaining the proper hygiene so after one bacteria another bacteria was uh, means, uh, in infecting that wound so that's why it, it failed a police constable and you can see the duration of healing and status of diabetes mellitus so non-diabetic patients were 19 and the diabetic patients were 26 so you can see in non-diabetic this healing started 21.1 percent of the cases healed by 21 days but there was no healing in diabetic patients but after two months 10.5 percent of the patients it's almost 31 percent of the patients were cured by uh, two months while only one case at the end of two months this was 3.8 percent diabetic could heal but by three months means 90 days 63.2 percent of them healed and the 69.2 so there was delay in healing with the diabetes mellitus patient but their healing was good and this uh, success rate was uh, insignificant if compared in the both groups so uh, you can see uh, the there are so many bacteria in, uh, infecting the um, wound. Escherichia coli in eight cases, Pseudomonas nine cases, Staphylococcus thirteen cases, Klebsiella four cases, and mixed in thirteen cases. And you can see the most resilient and most resistant bacteria in the time which took longer. It was the Klebsiella pneumoniae. Others uh, healed faster. So the, the, after ninety days, even the uh, this uh, the, the healing was not complete, uh, or the wound size remained larger so uh, uh, there was no much uh, change in the blood parameters but the hemoglobin raised from 10.44 to 11.25 percent and it was significant and otherwise the lymphocyte count which increased and the other total leukocyte count came down and then if you just see the size and depth the edge undermining necrotic tissue type necrotic tissue amount 
So everything day one versus day 21, you can see it was significantly reduced. And if you compare day one to three months, 90 days, again, you can find the significant difference, except in this undermining, it was already covered. So there was not much difference in this, or the undermining of the wound. So exudate amount and the surrounding skin color, peripheral tissue edema, peripheral tissue induration, granulation tissue exhalation, everything you can see there was significant difference between day one versus day 21. And same was day one versus after three months there was significant improvement. And I'm showing you a few of the cases. I can see this is a female non-diabetic having the wound. You can see the site. And then uh, you can see this is the slough, uh, bio, um, pus material, dead debris is there. Before the starting of the treatment, we isolated the bacteria, I started the therapy. And this picture comes on day 21. This is healthy granulation tissue. You cannot see this infected debris material here. Sloughing tissue, this is quite cure. And the margins have started healing here. And by the day 75, you can see this only this much of the wound has been left. This is another case you can see starting from day 1 to day 90, complete healing is there. So all these cases were, uh, as I have given in the definition, they are uh, coming after the 3 months of conventional therapy failure. And this is a 55 year male uh, diabetic and you can see the, the big toe has been uh, amputated but the healing was not occurring with the conventional therapy. Then he came to us and then we started therapy. Again you can see the healing process has started significantly by the end of 21 days and here is complete healing again this wound you can see 30 years non-diabetic male here again you can see this there is a complete healing by the day 90. a diabetic male you can see this plantar aspect is really very tough to uh, get it healed because all the time mechanical injury is occurring there but even in this case we are having the complete healing uh, this is diabetic male and you can see very bad wound is there and we started the therapy and later we came down to this by the day 60. And then this is another case, a very deep wound, 45 year diabetic female. This is, you can see the uh, infected slough tissue, yellow material is there. And we started the therapy and again, you can, you can see here, this is again a plantar aspect of the food. And here you can see the healthy granulation tissue, no sloughing, no debris. The tissue which is very uh, clear, bright red, and it means the healing has started. Day 60 is this picture and day 90 complete healing. In this case also, again, you can see it's a diabetic male, and by the end of 90 days, there was healing. So bacteriophages have a number of properties that make biofilm susceptible to their action. Why, why the antibiotics were failing, I have just shown in that picture. But here you can see they are known to produce are able to induce enzymes that degrade the extracellular matrix which is present in the biofilm because the biofilm is formed by the live bacteria there are certain viruses and the extracellular matrix excreted by the bacteria they are also able to infect persister cells means they are not actively multiplying but they are infecting them and remain dormant within them but reactivating when they become metabolically active so this is the beauty with this while antibiotics over the period of time they are getting degraded in in vivo and they become ineffective while in this case if the bacteria is not multiplying they will also remain sleeping with the bacteria when it becomes active they are they become active some cultured biofilm also seem better able to support the replication of bacteriophages than comparable planktonic system so it is said that the biofilms are basically helping the replication of the bacteriophages it is perhaps unsurprising that bacteriophages as the natural predator of bacteria have ability to target this common form of the bacterial life because the biofilms are naturally found in the um, in, in the nature and the bacteriophages are the natural products so they are basically trained for dealing with the biofilm formation because degradation of the bacteria is essentially needed for the maintenance of food chain so this is not unusual and we are simply exploiting the natural process nothing special and you can see the attack by the bacteriophages uh, integrity of biofilm disrupted by destruction of cell producing the biofilm matrix progeny bacteriophages diffuse through the biofilm biofilm matrix attacked by the enzymes produced by bacteriophages are their bacterial host so these three mechanisms are there persister cells infected by bacteriophages which remain dormant until they reactivate 
then lies them. So with this I have explained you earlier. So uh, we published uh, recently two papers. This paper was published uh, on the basis of first uh, customized uh, this uh, trial, clinical trial. A prospective study was there in 2019. Until date, we have got 43 uh, citations, and we are hoping that within five six months it should cross 50, because I have to reach the at least uh, my H factor 49. If this paper goes to 49 six more, I shall be getting this one. Then uh, this another paper, uh, the data which I showed you, the many of the cases are from this uh, paper, and this has been published published in December 2021, and by this time there are 27 citations, and not in a very great journal. This is the medium size in the journal, having the impact factor 2.5 or something like this, and in this case uh, we have. Uh, got the success and they are highly cited papers. So these two papers have citation we have got within maybe in one and a half years more than 60 citations. So conclusion is that the topical bacteriophage application is effective therapy for the treatment of non-healing wounds irrespective of the drug resistance status of the infecting bacteria. So bacteriophages don't consider whether the bacteria is resistant to antibiotics or not because their mode of action is different. They are basically going inside attaching on the cell surface receptors like viruses multiplying inside and then lysing the bacteria. It seems that the bacterial infection associated with biofilm formation may be the major issue in non-healing of the chronic wounds as 90% of them healed with the bacteriophage therapy. There was neither serious adverse effect nor adverse effect when we underwent this bacteriophage therapy in number of patients. So this is the uh, second part of the lecture and uh, here I would like to tell you that uh, bacteriophages are being used at that number of places and we are is having the uh, double blind randomized control trial going on where we are going to have the 47 cases in each group. This uh, I have given as a PhD topic and uh, we will be looking that is there any immunological response coming in those patients like antibody formation against the bacteriophages because bacteriophages can neutralize them if they are used for longer duration. Usually we have not found the rabbit model. I shall be showing you in the coming lectures. But uh, in patients we wanted to see in detail about the, the serious adverse reaction and uh, adverse reaction. Uh, if it is there um, any and then also the failure. Failure may occur basically because of the vascular disorders like the uh, varicose vein where the edema is occurring. Our patient is having serious uh, immunocompromised state or the nutritional deficiency. In those cases, we may get the failure, but this is the hope. The only thing is that the um, bacteriophages are uh, like smart bomb. They will be, uh, uh, it's better to have the um, um, uh, customized bacteriophages. However, in these chronic cases, it takes about six days to prepare a customized bacteriophage from the isolation of the bacteriophages till the purification, making them endotoxin or toxin free so that patients are not having uh, this uh, adverse effect. So, this takes only this much of the time. So, I think this is boon to us for to cure these such type of cases. And I'm getting the request from the whole country for the treatment of these chronic ulcers. So thank you very much and uh, again in the second part of this uh, talk and uh, it was better that I was there and I was able to uh, answer the queries which were coming in your mind. Uh, so again thank you very much.